probably the most impactful, significant experience I ever had with Street Fighter 2. And this was classic Street Fighter 2. Um, again, this was before arcades, before people started migrating to other arcades. I, me and my brother and my friends, we just played in our local arcade. And you know, we were the best players there. We thought we were absolutely the best players. And so we thought no one could beat us. And then one day, uh, there was two people who walked into the arcade and they just got on the Street Fighter 2 machine and they played us and they destroyed us. I mean, everything we knew about the game changed all of a sudden. Like, uh, one of the tactics that was popular, just getting popular back then, was jump attack, walk up and throw. And uh, a lot of people considered that cheap, so people didn't do it. And when we played these guys who came into the arcade, they would do jump attack, walk up, sweep. And every time they did that, we would stand up to counter throw and get swept every single time, almost like by reflex, by reaction. Like we couldn't control it, even though we told our hand not to stand up, we would just do it and get swept every time. And we were just like, all of us at that local arcade were just confused because these two random guys just came and destroyed us. And then after they finished beating us, they actually said to us, you two are actually some of the better players that we've played because you actually realize something's going on. They handed us a couple of flyers and said, there's a tournament at this comic book store called World's Finest and uh, we want to gather as many people as we can. And it turned out that the two players who walked in the arcade was a guy named Tony Tsui and Tomo Ohira. So they were actually going around trying to recruit people into World's Finest. And they basically showed us that we sucked at the game. And then me and my brother went to the World's Finest tournament and what we saw there was just on this whole nother level. It was. It was probably one of the most amazing experiences ever because all of a sudden you just realized that Street Fighter was played at a level far beyond anything that we ever knew existed for that game. Yo, Slim Shady. Yo. In 1992, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting was the undisputed king of the arcade era. I'm one of them pretty rappers. Fuck if I really have to. I'm gonna slap you. King of Detroit, who they name in the city. It was here that the game gave rise to players like Jeff Schaefer, Mike Watson, and Tomo Ohira. Expert, bad and evil is coming soon. And seeds get stuck head first back in their mother's womb. The shit is written. In my eyes, I'm the illest MC spitting. What? Leaving all of you cat shit and kittens. I gotta do You wanna play until your soul is dead. Like, you have nothing left in you. You don't even want to play the guy next week or tomorrow. Regional rivalries between Northern California and Southern California kept the game popular and fiercely competitive. How was the time when everybody bought the game, you went home and just sandbagged your crap when you got to the arcade? During its reign, Street Fighter 2 garnered countless imitations and massive competitive following, nearly unmatched in the arcade scene. And with every iteration and balance change, the game and its scene grew stronger. You get blasted at, you get laughed at And then, it stopped. With the release of Super Street Fighter 2, fans' interest in the series began to waver. The speed had been reduced, and the adjustments made divided much of the community. It was a big disappointment. It was a very big step down from hyper fighting or champion. and The whole movement of you go to the arcade, you get competition, you go to the arcade, there wouldn't be anyone playing it. I mean, hardly anyone played that game. It was, it's just a dead game. Capcom released Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo in 1994 to help remedy the problem, but the community remained divided. The subsequent releases of Street Fighter Alpha and Street Fighter 3 failed to capture the audience once hailed by hyperfighting. Soon it became evident Street Fighter had lost its hold. In the years that followed, countless imitations and offshoots inspired by the series garnered slight popularity. However, as the 90s came to a close, the arcade scene dwindled and eventually died. For nearly eight years, the fighting game scene remained low-key and desperate. And then, something happened. In October of 2007, Capcom announced Street Fighter IV. Almost instantly, the fighting game scene bounced back from the brink of death. 
Street Fighter 4 and its revision, Super Street Fighter 4, breathed some much needed life into the dying fighting game community and made it grow larger than it had ever been. But something was still missing. In the 90s, when you went to go play a game, you, you walked, you drove, or you begged for someone to drop you off. So the journey there made playing the game a lot sweeter. Uh, nowadays, everything is so accessible. You, know, you go online, you just, in your house, you can sit there and it's like, yeah, I mean, it's cool you can meet millions of people, but you, know, you, you kind of get a little complacent. I do miss, very much miss the cutthroat kind of, you know, I, I, I really want to win. I really want to win kind of attitude that seems to be missing from a lot of the new players from today. Just to tack on to that, there's kind of like a mindset today like, oh, if he didn't know how to counter that, I didn't really beat him. I can only really beat him if he knows all my tricks. But back then, no, there was none of that. You beat him with whatever you could. We like to call the, the community back in the day underground because we, you know, we played with a sense of type of, we didn't get in the limelight too much. We kind of let our gameplay make the name for ourselves. It's not like we go out, win a tournament, and then like, oh, look at me now, ha ha, I can do a show, I can do this, I can do that. And you just keep playing. You play, you play, people start talking about you, like, oh, here, but that kid at the arcade in some city. How SoCal Regionals came about, um, it was actually NorCal Regionals. You know, John Choi pretty much took over the, and rebooted it into a major now. I'm not thinking, I'm thinking, all right, you know, uh, you know, we, we do have, you know, major down here, but it doesn't bring the old school rivalry back because NorCal and SoCal have a rival, rivalry. And it wasn't called the NorCal SoCal Originals. It was just like off of two days, I won the, I won the, the championship, they won, uh, you know, in NorCal. What I want to do with this tournament is keep up the rivalry, mainly number one, uh, with NorCal and SoCal. Because I believe if NorCal and SoCal together are really good at Street Fighter, that's how it was back then. We were beating the Japanese back in the days, okay? And um, I think this country has a lot to learn from us to get better. Uh, I mean, that's kind of speaking like we're cocky and everything. No, it's just we can, we can back it up. This is the story of the Southern California Regionals, the men who worked for it, and the scene that fought for it. This is the story of how Alex Valle tried to bring back 1992. Rated T for team. Yes, yes, y'all! New Super Street Fighter 4! Just Blaze! I'm go. a beast with a joystick, I'm the best of the best I breed a punch with an uppercut, put a scar on your chest I rip your eye from your socket, see I got something to test How many fireballs I land before I beat you to death? I rip the east to the west, I got no stop in my quest I'll take on every other character, then kill me a set I got no shortness of breath, you people making me bored I definitely roll you motherfuckers, throw a rose on your core You got no dignity, bitches, you got a trap when I blast I'm like a seven Three matchup compared to half of the cast And you just bitch and you moan Oh man he's so fucking cheap I can't jump with this character Shut the fuck up you free I'm top tier and I'm building a fucking massive attack April is here, world warriors back New Super Street Fighter 4, only $39.99 Pre-order now I can, I can try things and but see the difference is when I try things I remember them I know if it worked or not and I mean I'm getting a lot of opportunities to try these things here versus as much cool things that I do outside and offline it's not enough I actually play a lot more online these days than I do offline it's still kind of weird but it's all much have time for I'm not, I'm not really doing anything right now I'm just all this is muscle memory of the last Piper I played. As of 2010, Super Street Fighter 4 is the dominant force in the fighting game community. So there hasn't been a game. Like, at least a game the community all enjoys in a long time. Like, today is different. You know, you have a lot of new faces in this in the ball game, you know. So it's not always the same faces. Since 1995, Alex Valle has remained active in the fighting game community. Uh, you know, I was just pretty much a little kid at the time. 
meeting just random good people. You know, I, I was uh, pretty decent. Um, you know, meeting players, progressively getting better, and going to different locations. I kind of did this on my own because I just wanted to beat everybody else. And eventually, so I met Watson. Um, and uh, he just saw potential in me after. I mean, I, it took him a while to, to actually pay attention to my game, but you know, he took me under his wing and drove me to a lot of tournaments, and eventually, I started winning. Fuck yeah, I do, man. I fucking miss the 90s. Like, there's this word that everybody uses today because it's fucking trendy. What is it called? Real talk? That's real bull talk. That's bullshit. <laughs> that's not real talk. That's like, that's like, finally, you're going to say uh, an opinion from the heart, right? Yeah. Well, fuck. Why does it take you to say real talk to speak your mind nowadays? You know what I mean? It's so, it's supposed to, like, freaking accentuate what you Yeah. It, but, it, I mean, really, if you're just, if you're... Just say what you gotta yeah, say. Yeah, say what you gotta say. Just like the song says. Do oh. what you say. <laughs> yeah, say, say, say what you need to say. You know what I mean? <laughs> then, but, okay. top players just did not talk to you. They did not acknowledge you. And if you sucked, they would basically tell you, like, get off the machine scrub, you're wasting my time, kind of thing. I mean, seriously, there were so many instances in my life, even, you know, myself, that there was a lot of top players and they literally would never talk to you and they would just kind of give you these dirty looks until you started being able to beat them. So, I hear you know Tomo. Are you kidding? Tomo and I are like that. I'm sort of like his Yoda when it comes to Street Fighter. I taught him a lot of his cooler moves. I mean, you can't really see me, but I'm over here to the left. Yeah, right. You can't say that to people these days. They're, I mean, you're close friends, sure. Um, and, I, you know, I was going a little extreme there, but I said, that's what I said. But now you have to really watch what you say out of respect of people. Okay, fine, I get it. But they're taking that into Street Fighter skills too. Um, they feel that socializing and being popular is a skill in Street Fighter. If you can put yourself out there much, get yourself recognition, then you deserve something out of it, which is complete bullshit. Um, I don't know what how to explain okay. it. Back in the day, like when we played, we played it with everything we had. Like it was like the last thing on earth to do. <laughs> you know and now it's like you there's so much to play out there people choose what to play they they, you know, they split their time amongst other things and it's just the, the focus like uh, yeah there it is the focus isn't completely there when it comes to putting dedicating your skill and time to street fighters some people are a little sorry you, you'll notice a person is really sorry it's just lacking in one special ability and Mostly, I see it as uh, mind games the most. They just don't understand how to pressure people and how to get the most damage in those situations. They just seem to just randomly do stuff. They don't really get it. Personally, I think it's a nice thing. It's a nice gesture. But when listening to stories about Sunny Hill Golf Land, Regency, uh, Camelot, all these places, I kind of miss the fact that there was almost a rite of passage where if you sucked, there was the little boy machine and then there was the big boy machine and there were certain players that you have to generally respect. Back in the 90s, people would save things. They would keep secrets from each other. They would keep tricks from each other and save them. When you played in a tournament, you always had your secondary character and your business character. And early on in the tournament, you would never use your main character. You would never use them from the get-go because you had to hide all your main character tricks. So you would try to coast your way through the scrubs with your secondary character so that you could surprise people later on with your good tricks. Blanco was just a great pick because he could, he could basically get this range on you and you couldn't do anything. You, he basically jumps up and down and with well-timed roundhouses and low, low roundhouses and fierces and you could just play Rue and trade Fierce through the fireball and punch him in the face and then take the fireball hit and he'd take more damage and then get in this range where Rue basically couldn't do a dang thing, dude. You just you jump up and down and occasionally throw out the roundhouse and the Fierce and you'd just get beat down by uh, by attrition. I did, get, I got Tom on the corner. I got him in the corner in like 10 seconds. I jumped straight up. The kid walks slightly forward with Rue and right as I'm coming down, he does a spin kick, and my 
my roundhouse goes right through it because it's invincible for a split second. And the spin kick hits me, and I can't block it. And I'm thinking, what the hell? Nobody. And he does this out of the blue because I don't practice with Tomo. I don't really talk to him. He just shows up and does this on the fly in the game like a freaking learning computer. It's just developing these these tricks at home that no one has seen because there was no online play back in the day. You develop your skills at home, go to arcade, and if you bust out that combo you found out or there's a strategy like, oh, I just, you can just use it until they adapt. And it's just, I, I miss sitting at home and just playing hours upon hours and develop my own strategies and going to arcade and beast on people. Wednesday Night Fights was the first step towards something bigger. So one of the things that I taught in Wednesday Night Fights is that you need to have a rival. And uh, what that means is you got to have a, a competitor that is about your, um, equal to your skill level. And if you guys can, can't, you guys don't know how much you're getting better at the game um, until you start playing other people and you watch your rival play other people and you're beating just about the same amount of people and you come back and play again like you're both leveling up like me and John Choi leveled up like that me and Mike Watson leveled up like that every week Wednesday night fights remains a major focal point within Southern California players like Shiza, Ed Ma, Justin Wong and guests like Ryan Hart attend the event each week. The, the name didn't start until we went to this guy's uh, house, very good friend of ours, uh, Dentron. Um, he's Matt um, Costa Mesa. We started going to his house, uh, ga like a gathering, an apartment, you know, because my apartment was too small, I had to go to his house. And we automatically pulled 20, 30 people, and it was starting to get a little crowded, and damn, you know, it's like we can't go there all the time. So. Shiggle BMX, which is another one of our good friends, Daniel Tan, opened up his house and we started going there into the garage. A lot of people call it garage land. Um, yeah, he pretty much said, hey, uh, I need a favor. And I said, what's up? And he says, hey, I, I want to expand the community. I want to you know, help build the fighting game community. I want to strengthen California and show what Southern California can do. Um, can you find a place or can we use your place to play here? and train uh, because we don't have a place at Dentrons anymore, which is where it was originally. Uh, and I said, yeah, well, I mean, I have an open garage. We don't really use it. And this is my chance to help out the community in some form. And that's what I did. So that's how it started. And we're like, yeah, it's got, you know, this scene is still alive. I mean, the arcades are kind of dying, but people still need a place to play. And, you know, it soon evolved to like the whole streaming thing. AJ came on board. And we moved on to Dave and Buster's, which we started getting close to like 80 to 100 people. And, you know, that was great. I mean, and people that went to the very first Dave and Buster's tournament, that was, I mean, it was a really, really nice presentation. Uh, we started to get a good, solid 100 people. Now we're at Hollywood Park Casino, which um, on grand opening, we had about 200 people. And here we are today. Good stuff. Weekly, um, Wednesday Night Fights houses a structured tournament simulator. Players are divided into four stations, A through D. The top players, and well-known tournament veterans, are placed at station A. Stations B through D house the rest. Each week, players play in their respective stations in a double elimination tournament bracket. At the end of the day, the top four of each station are promoted to station A the following week. The bottom 12 from station A and the rest of the non-qualifying players are sent back to the lower stations with another chance to try to break in. Designed to train consistency, the program attracts players from various parts of California every week. Uh, Station A players, uh, I mean, those are like pretty much the the breed that came out of like Evo, came out of uh, uh, North Cal, Super North Cal Regionals. Those names are to pop out a lot more. Those are Wednesday Night Fights regulars. Um, the, the guys that just came in right now that are kind of holding their ground. Um, this, this new cat named Jorge, really really good real player. A resident of Santa Ana, Jorge Medina's entry into the competitive community started with Wednesday Night Fights. Street Fighter, I actually started playing when I was six, seven, eight years old. Around eight, yeah, I would say. And I would uh, cross the street and there was a video store and it had arcade cabinets and all the kids from the block would go play and 
uh, I started playing since uh, Street Fighter Alpha. I would play then Street Fighter Alpha 3. I even played a Tekken. Uh, not their strike, never competitively. Uh, Mars Hecom and Mars Hecom 2, I would play those. Um, it was mostly just uh, having fun, enjoying the game, and mostly uh, NBC2 was the game to play. <laughs> ¿Qué tal hacemos? Game over. 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 I wasn't really like attached, like I didn't feel passionate for them until like Street Fighter 4 came out and I was like, oh wow, that's sick. Oh. Play from like 3 till like 9. And then I would come home, I would play on Xbox Live, and I just got better and better, and I started going to casuals. I found out about what casuals were, like shovels at Wednesday nights back at Westminster. And then I went to Divin Busters, and then, you know, uh, Inglewood now, so. Thinking, I would admire like the greats. I would be into Daigo National Tournament, GameStop National Tournament, and Justin Wong. I thought he was good. I heard that the Japanese were the better players, and then I would look at like YouTube videos like all the time, mostly just Daigo. But uh, and then I got a lot of inspiration from that. And my my philosophy was at the time, be like them, you know, imitate them. They are good, and I thought that was really cool. And then. It shifted to like a more tactical, more technical playstyle. Like this beats that, that beats that. And then lately it's just been a, these last few weeks, last few days, actually I've been changing it into uh, how I used to view games when I was little. Uh, having fun with them. Casual, so I'm at that house. And we, he invites a couple of us over and we play street fighter. And then we bring setups. Uh, we only have one today, but uh, yeah, we get together and we play. If you're not having fun, then there's no point to it. And it's funny because I feel that I have uh, seen more to the game than when I previously did. I think it's just a, a lot funner, obviously. I look for the fun in the game. and. When I improve, then it doesn't feel like I'm working at it. It's just, it's pure joy, and I think that's, that's really cool. <laughs> right now, my goal would be where I'm at. I think I'm capable of beating anybody that comes. Uh, I think that and yeah, there's no one that I feel that's just vastly superior than me. So I can I can win first place, but I must uh, I'm I can be impatient. So I need to be I need to work on that from here to SoCal Regionals. But above all I do think I can be first place. Looking to improve his game, Jorge sets off for Hollywood Park, hoping to make station A once again. I think it gives you the tools to succeed, but at the same time, there's a big difference in doing something in training mode and doing something in a match. Brent Lahar is a business law student at Cal Poly Pomona. A 
frequent visitor of the college's on-campus arcade, Lahar attributes his strong fundamentals to an arcade mentality. I went to the orientation for Cal Poly. I remember I was, we were there for the, the orientation, and they showed us, you know, oh, right here we have an arcade, and let's move on. And I was just like, no, let's, let's go inside, let's go to the side of the arcade. So I remember, you know, I keep wanting to go back to that arcade. And they had, you know, they're like, okay, we're going to take a half an hour lunch break, and everyone else went to, you know, Panda Express Subway. I went to the arcade, and I actually started playing, I played a match of uh, Melty Blood. <laughs> I usually set aside an hour or two, an hour or two breaks between my periods, and depending on how much homework I have, if I don't have homework, I'll go to the arcade, which generally tend, you know, generally I usually do my homework at home, so I usually spend about hour, hour and a half in the arcades. Just, and from that, I mean, I went from playing one game to, oh, well, I'm here all the time, I might as well learn this game, I might as well learn this game. So that's kind of why I started branching off into more of the games they have there. Got that white can, respect to Daigo? Yeah. The Street Fighter, I really didn't have an idea that there was like a, a scene where people would gather and play. I would say until I saw the Justin Wong Daigo, you know, parry video from Third Strike, that was kind of where I was like, oh wow, there's, you know, people play at high level, like, you know, there are tournaments like this. I was, I was a kid and I didn't have an arcade stick, so I figured I, there was no way I would get to a high level because I didn't have an arcade stick. So it wasn't really, I guess, until Street Fighter 4 that I really, really started to actually, you know, play a lot and try to get good at it. I'm pretty crappy at these Hadouken cancels. Honestly, I want to use it as a test of how strong I've become, I guess, and, and that's kind of what I mean by I play a lot of different video games, like, you know, like, you know, I've played, you know, World of Warcraft, Defense of the Ancients, stuff like that, that's, a lot of it is I play these games at, a, you know, a, a semi-competitive level or, at, you know, like, a you know, a pretty serious level because I want to see how far I can go with this, you know, how, how strong I can become, or, you know, how good I can be, so I want to go to SoCal Regionals because I haven't entered a Super Street Fighter 4 tournament and I've picked up, you know, Ken, and I think I'm not at the level I want to be with him yet, but I'm pretty optimistic about the progress I've made so far, so I just kind of want to use it as a test to see how well I'm doing. James Chen has been a prominent member of the SoCal Street Fighter community for years. <laughs> Aside from a deep understanding of the game's core mechanics, Chen has had a large hand in helping build the community as a whole, helping organize the Evolution fighting game tournament, as well as serving as one of the game's most well-known commentators. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, I got it. I got started the same way that everybody else did. It was really just, um, I started playing Street Fighter 2 just like everybody else. And, um, but the thing is, for some reason, it stuck with me. I just kept playing it and I just never stopped. Do you mind if I close your laptop at all or anything? Yeah, I don't care. Okay. So this is the thing that I've been This is the guest room in here. Currently, Martin is uh, staying overnight because he and Justin are leaving for season's beatings tomorrow. So, um, but uh, the thing to note here basically is this is my game collection room. So I have all my old systems here. I'm, you know, I've got Saturn and Super Nintendo. I even have the super rare, like, old NES. I consider myself a strong player. Like, to me, the top players are the ones that, you know, that are winning tournaments. That pretty much whenever you go into a tournament, you know they have a chance of winning the tournament. These are like the the Vys and the and the Rickies and Justins and the Mike Rosses and such and um, I don't know I always I've always considered myself just always been on the cusp of that you know like I feel like I if I just took one more step I could get there but you know it's been very hard for me to actually get to that point. <laughs> Usually, if 
I'm in the pools, if I'm not in pool A, I will usually finish first or second in my pool and get back to pool A. And then once I'm in pool A, I usually, I tend to lose the, like the same three or four people and uh, I usually finish like just out of the top four. But Chen hopes for more. Again, Wednesday night fights. Seems like the ideal proving ground. Yeah, definitely. I would love to be one of the car one of the players who actually consistently stays at Station A, you know, who finishes top four all the time. You know, those players are like Andy Ocr, Tatsu, uh, Shiza, Vai himself, obviously, Online Tony. You know, whenever Combo Fiend shows up, he always finishes top four, you know. I would love to be one of the players who could actually continue to be, you know, to, I, I would love to be one of the top players at Wednesday Night Fights. Yeah, definitely. The PS2 games, these are all PS2 games. You can be in the here. shot if you want. <laughs> and, uh, and if I open up this cabinet here, I have even all my even more old school games over here. All my PlayStation 1 games, and all my Dreamcast games, all my Super Nintendo games, and like Nintendo 64, regular Nintendo games. So. Yeah, I've been collecting these games for a really long time, so... And then here's my giant cabinet of controller madness, so... So all the controllers for my old random games. At, I'm at a weird kind of transition phase, because, like, I, I should be too old for Street Fighter now. It almost kind of feels like... But you know what? The funny thing about it is, there's really no such thing as too old for Street Fighter, because... Street Fighters never existed before, so how do you how do people know that you're supposed to outgrow something that no one's ever really had a chance to outgrow? I mean, people tell you, oh, you should be outgrowing video games right now, but then you look at all these other hobbies, like look at all these poker players, right? I mean, look at Doyle Brunson, right? He's what like like 180 years old or whatever like that, and you know he's still playing poker. He still goes to the World Series of Poker every year, and you know, keeps playing all these tournaments and stuff like that. So, you know, who's to say you're supposed to outgrow it? Well, SoCal Regionals is coming up really soon. I would like to do really well. I, I would always like to do really well, especially since I heard now that Sako is coming. You know, Sako is the, basically the best Kami player in Japan, and Kami is obviously my favorite character, so I've watched a lot of Sako videos and stuff. So, you know, it would be really cool if I could do really well with Kami, and then, you know, he'd notice me and be like, oh, you know, if he said I'm good, then I'd be like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> and I'm also a huge, huge Mega Man fan. I've been playing Mega Man since I was, like, really little, so, like, Justin actually knows that, so he got me this from Japan, and Martin got me this from, like, some Capcom convention or something. You know it's better than Mega Man. You're not going to say Mega Man X, are you? Oh, Sonic. You know, what I want people to get out of it is that I want them to acknowledge that there is a rivalry between NorCal and SoCal. We need that rivalry to get better. You know, and NorCal SoCal is so big that um, I think it, it, it can only help the community in that aspect. The Level Up organization, founded by Valle, is dedicated to improving the Southern What's California there? gaming community. Oh, what's up, dude? What's up? They are not only the creators of Wednesday Night Fights, but the men behind the Southern California regionals. Okay, that's comedic value. <laughs> that's spoofing the logo. Jimmy Nguyen, Frank Reyes, and AJ Papa meet with Valle to organize tournament logistics. Planning the tournaments, uh, floor plans, uh, figuring out the schedule, make sure things run on time. Yes, let's go to the stream. All right. You don't even know. You guys don't even know. That, that shit takes a long time to do. I mean, uh, I don't think a lot of people in the community know um, what goes on behind streaming. It does take a lot of work. It's draining. You're, you're sitting there and you're, you're trying to produce a show for people who are not there. Back, Ricky's saying, Stago saying, you want to play footsies with me? Let's play some footsies. Ricky's footsies, some of the best in the business. Stago puts him on his back. We're coming for the throw. Small punches, ooh. A flurry, a flurry coming out of Ricky. Ricky, I'm not playing with Ultra One, so he's not able to follow that up. All I know is I was standing there watching the finals, overlooking all my guys doing the stream. Then as soon as that screen went black, I sat down, buried my face in my hands, and I was just silent the rest of the whole finals. It's, it's, it just happened. You don't want it to happen. 
and there was no way to prevent it. Just kind of like a freak accident. Well, at Evo, I have the best. Sim simply put it, the stream went down during uh, the grand finals. It's like, you know, of all the times, it's like the stream gods. Like I, I like to say, the stream gods were wanted to play a cruel joke. They picked the most opportune time for them to shut down the stream. When is that? Grand finals. Yeah, let's shut down the stream. Um, you know, I was really bummed out, bummed out, bummed about it for a while. And, uh, you know, it just took me a while to finally think that, you know, shit, shit happens. Think about all the backlash we're going to get, all the shit talking we're going to get. There's these conspiracy theories like, oh, you know, we wanted to cut the content so Evo can sell it. No, there's not, it's just, it just went down. At the most inopportune time, you could think. Well, like any job, you're going to regret it. You're going to have days where you're just like, fuck streaming. Why am I doing this? All the stream monsters on the internet, they, they don't appreciate it. But then, you know, there's also a part of you who, when you're streaming, you're like, oh, look, I'm giving, an in I'm giving insight into what the fighting game culture is like. I'm showing what the hype is. I'm bringing people matches. Um... I thought, like, a friend of mine once told me it's like putting on a puppet show. Um, you know, it's, there's a little bit of a, I guess, an art element to that. So I really like producing. And there's times when there's, you're just like, why am I streaming this when half the people on the internet give me shit about it? So yeah, there's going to be some of those days. How about one, one game, fly rounds? Want to do that? I mean, we can do two, two out of three, just so be... Yeah, there's, okay. We'll write the rules down, too, for that, that's fine. All right, so Gamer B Gauntlet Exhibition, or... Arizona coming, oh, Hawaii. NorCal, Hawaii, who else? Did you tell Cole, Alex? Yeah, I told Cole. What so that's he Seattle? What take? Um, he, yeah, of course he's excited about it. It's like, it's a matter of if they can, if they can afford it or not. We have six, we or, have or a longer intermission for everybody to eat. So that's a keep in mind. That's Nothing's going on on Friday at all. Just booze. And well, Friday is just that's, 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 not, that's not our production. That, that's something to uh, that's yeah. John's. We'll we'll assess if it's uh, as far as our resources. N nothing, yeah, nothing like I mean, that. Was seriously, the, the idea right now is to keep his pre party separate from the main ball. I'm putting everything, like all my experience, into running a professional um, uh, production for this tournament with my team. With uh, the, the, the best stream in the, in the business, we have that. Um, you know, I know all the, all the players personally in, around the world. Like, I've played with them, I've been to Japan, you know, I've been to um, all around the country. Um, and I just want to show the community what I can do with the players, um, with pre pretty much the decision making of, of what everybody of everybody wants to have in the tournament. I know what they want in the tournament, so I'm gonna make it happen for them. Trust fall. Trust <laughs> hopes. Anyway, All right, next. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's not so much, I guess, a win or loss, it's just if I'm satisfied with how, I guess, my training is kind of paid off. Yeah. Brett Lahar arrives at Wednesday Night Fights, hoping to test his mettle against the competitive community. However, this week, the event is slightly different. I had a long day at my day job, so usually uh, at my day job, I at least try to organize the brackets and have them printed out and everything nice and neat, but work wasn't happening today, couldn't, have, couldn't do it. So last resort had to come here and just pretty much check the thread, do it manually. But uh, we don't have a big turnout right now, so uh, I kind of eliminated a lot of the stations and just opened up two stations only. Good and, stuff. Yeah, yeah, and we're doing it that way. So, but people still want to play there, waiting for me. So got to do it. With only two stations, James Chen and Jorge are situated at Station A, while Brett attempts to make his way up through Station B. 
I'm kind of nervous about it because it is my first time, you know, playing at a high level of, you know, Street Fighter 4 in a while. I want to set my own style and try it there and see how well, you know, my style does. I want to see just, you know, how well I can hold up against some of the really good players. I think more than anything as a player, when you play Street Fighter, it's what you're thinking. And I've been in Station A consistently for I've, I've been there all, the whole time it's what you're thinking and I've been going through like a lot of like bumps and like I just trying to find out who, who I am and like how to approach the game and you know whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger so I feel I've been improving I definitely still really really enjoy the competition you know because I've always been a competitive person Whenever I played any game, I always wanted to be the best person at pretty much any video game that I played. Because, I mean, I put a lot of time into this game. Obviously, like I said, I've almost been playing for 20 years now, you know. You would like to see it go somewhere. You would like to see it grow, and you like to see new players come in and everything like that. And so that, that also drives me a lot, you know, when I'm actually playing it and, and helping the community. And, you know, seeing it kind of grow, like just the recent resurgence from Street Fighter Four has just been... It's just been fantastic. Like I, I, I'm, I'm basically just kind of soaking it in right now because it's, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's wonderful to see the excitement back uh, in for Street Fighter right now. Finally, Valle begins the pools, and the players begin making their rounds. What you gonna do? 
Chen and Jorge make their way through the opening rounds. Brett doesn't fare as well. Yeah. That's it's pretty bad, actually. My execution was like really crap. Like I got in a few times with Ken, and I just didn't execute the, the right combos. And just with a character like that, if you don't maximize when you get in, you're kind of bummed. So I wasn't really taking advantage of me getting in. Whenever he got in, he was doing the right combos. So. Station B progresses towards the loser's bracket, and Brett gets one more chance to prove himself.
match up a little bit better. Uh, I think I needed to get more human element. I think I needed to train against actual people more, because I, I did a training mode a lot to work on my execution. And, you know, my execution was pretty, it was a lot better that round, or that, that match with the, with the Rose player, but it was still, I wasn't expecting just to not be out of my element. Like, Brett is eliminated from Station B and sent home. As Station A continues, James and Jorge are knocked into the loser's bracket and end up facing each other. Jorge loses, and James Chen requalifies for Station A. I really can't. I just uh, should have played better. I just got outplayed. In lots of cases. Uh, I simply, I just need to work harder and just play more and practice more. And I'll, um, there's really nothing like, oh, he did this. He did that. Uh, sometimes it's it's in the moment sort of thing, and you can't really like. Uh, practice off of that, you really can't. I did not meet my expectations. I really felt like I could have won it, or I was just going finals, and I didn't get, I didn't even qualify for Station A again. We qualify, so. Yeah, I actually was fourth place in Station A, so uh, I will be in top four. So, hope, yeah, I'll be in Station A next week as well. So. That's good, so that's, that's good. good. Actually, you know, it's funny, because I just said that. It's the first time I think I've actually made Station A twice in a row. Two weeks in a row. So. Happy with yourself? Yeah, oh yeah, very happy, very happy. So, SoCal's been practicing. Up. They've been stepping their stuff up. You have to have a lot of different tools though, in your arsenal because people are watching and they can read for patterns. So, uh, as long as as you're getting the damage done and um, you're pretty much mind fucking up, <laughs> uh, then you're going to be very successful. It, this is the way it is. If I lose one game, you're going to lose a hundred in my head so that's pretty much it and if i can't do it in this tournament i'm gonna make sure it happens the stage is set so call is gonna definitely represent ten thousand dollars is on the line who wants some i want drama want to make a scary movie rappers coming in with their team and carry toolies you can jump right out of the screen and barely move me we hard hitting Directing and starring in it Y'all want drama? Wanna make a scary movie? Rappers coming in with their team and carry toolies You can jump right out of the screen and barely move me Be hard hitting Directing and starring in it The one man on the planet that'll drive off of the Grand Canyon Hop out of a Grand Am and land in a handstand Any man playing in a battle will get snapped out of his clothes so fast That it'll look like an invisible man standing I'm headed for hell I'd rather be dead or in jail Bill Clinton, hit this You better than hell